Hello, so this is day 25 of Bible in One Year, and our Bible text for today are as follows, Exodus chapters 12 to 13, and then Matthew chapter 16. Alright, so to begin, uh, let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, we thank you for another day that you've given us to be able to live our purpose, to serve you, and to be able to grow as Christians. And Lord, I thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, for the provisions, for the guidance, and for the wisdom, and of course for the salvation, Lord. And um, we ask for forgiveness for all of our sins, for all of our mistakes and our shortcomings, uh, especially in serving you. May you guide us and help us to be able to be uh, more Christ-like, to be more you know, like Christians, and to be able to be more like Jesus, and may we be able to obey your commandments, your words, and so uh, guide us, Lord, uh, show us the way, uh, guide us to the right path, and help us to grow uh, better as Christians. And we thank you for the trials, the challenges that allow us to grow spiritually. And of course, um, we thank you for all of those trials and for your continued presence in our lives. We know that everything happens for a reason. And we know that in everything that happens, there it's either there's a re lesson that you want us to learn, or there's something that you want us to uh, realize that would help us in our growth as Christians. <clears throat> and Lord, um, we uh, pray for again the guidance, wisdom, and uh, strength, revival. Uh, guidance, provision of needs for your, all your children, for our workers, for our pastors, the church workers, uh, Bible school teachers, uh, church members, and uh, area leaders, and of course, uh, and missionaries, and also uh, enlighten us as we read your word for today. May you show us the message and may we be able to apply them in our daily lives, so Lord. So thank you and at least we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This man shall be unto you the beginning of months, it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of his souls. Every man according to his eating, eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two sides, side post, and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And he shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thou shalt eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste, and it is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast 
by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread, even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No matter of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day, and your generations be an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened in all your habitations, shall ye eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts to the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and, in the, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass, when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this, this service. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? <clears throat> that ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, and to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. For there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord. As ye have said, Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, We, all, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up, and their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses the Sokot, about six hundred thousand on foot, there were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked and leavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt, and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of the four hundred and thirty years, even the selfsame day it came to pass, that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover, there shall no stranger eat thereof. 
But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and an Irish servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten, thou shalt not carry forth all of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it, and when a stranger shall should sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home-born, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt with their armies. Exodus chapter 13 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, what Whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of men and of beasts, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of the hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no living bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the mount, in the mount Abib. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of, Can of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, which he sware unto their fathers to give thee, a land flowing me with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep the service in this month. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leavened bread shall be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show the son in that day, saying, This is so because of, the, of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon, upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand had the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season, from year to year. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto, the, unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of men among thy children shall thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in, ta in time to come, cometh, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him, By strength of, ha of hand the Lord brought us out from Asia from the house of bondage? And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes, for by strength of hand the Lord brought us forth out of vision. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although thou was near. For God said, Lest for adventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, torn us out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sokot, and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the, of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Okay, and then we have Matthew chapter 16.
Matthew chapter 16. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulter adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. But which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye, not under, do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets he took up, neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets he took up? How is it that ye do not understand, that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the seducers? Then understood they how, the, how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. When Jesus came into the coast of the Caesarea Philippe, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed thou art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here, we shall not taste it of that till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Alright, so that ends the Matthew chapter 16. So a bit of reflection or something to share. So in Exodus 12 to 13, basically, uh, yung last plague that happened in Egypt, which is uh, the death of all the first born of the Egyptians, uh, men of men and of cattle. But uh, God uh, provided a commandment to all the children of Israel to uh, do a sacrifice and then to put blood on the uh, doorpost. Okay? And so when God or the destroyer went to Egypt that, that night at midnight, they passed over all the houses of the Israelites. So they did not... Uh, what they call this, they did not kill the firstborn in any of the Israelites. And only the Egyptians, since, you know, they don't have that command from God to put a sacrifice and put blood on the, uh, on the door, on the doorway. So, at that night, uh, there was, you know, crying, wailing, 
in the line of Egypt because in every house there was at least one person dead, you know, the firstborn. And it's the same at Pharaoh's house. His heir, his firstborn also died. And so that same night he called uh, Moses and Aaron and then told them to go. You can go, okay? And so in a way, um, it's a picture of for on the part of the Israelites, it's a picture of God's protection that if you are the children of God, uh, God would protect you from harm. And if he's going to put out a punishment to all the wicked people, they, uh, he would not, uh, in a way, involve you in those punishments. Unless you deserve it. Unless you deserve a punishment. He Maybe if an Israelite disobeyed that man, then of course they destroy you without going to that Israelite's house, saw no blood on the doorway, and of course the firstborn in that house would have to be killed. Okay, but at that point all the Israelites were uh, obedient, and so they did according to God's command. Okay, so um, in a way as Christians, we also strive to uh, obey God's commandments, especially those that we read in the Bible. Okay. When Jesus uh, started teaching in the New Testament, of course, uh, he summarized the all the laws and all the commandments into two: love the Lord, <clears throat> sorry, love the Lord your God, and then the second would be love your neighbors as you love yourself. Okay. And so we have that. And then Exodus chapter twelve to thirteen. Basically, it's the beginning and the the background about the Passover, the Israelites uh, celebrate the Passover, uh, which is basically that scene, you know, in Egypt when Jesus or the destroyer uh, passed over the Israelites' houses because they saw the blood on the door, on the doorway, okay. and then they only smote the Egyptians, okay, the firstborn of men and of cattle. And then um, we also read that basically they stayed in Egypt, you know, from the time of Joseph until the time of Moses, uh, 430 years. And then Joseph uh, made them promise to that when they go out of Egypt, they would bring his bones with them. And so they did, Moses did bring the bones out of Egypt. And then God stayed with them, you know, in their journey to the land of, you know, to the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, basically, during the day, uh, God follows them as, uh, what they call this, a pillar of smoke or something like that. And then a pillar of fire at night to provide them with light. Okay. Um, or pictures. Uh, basically, when it comes to the Egyptians or the pharaohs on their part, um, <laughs> it's a picture of uh, non-believers. It is only at a certain point when they lose something very valuable, you know, their firstborn, their child, their children, that they get to realize, you know, even after going through the nine plagues, they did not believe that God exists, that uh, the Israelites are asking the Pharaoh to let them go because God has commanded it. Uh, during the nine flags, even if they saw that, you know, whenever they request that, you know, uh, pray to your God and tell him to stop the flag. Okay? And then Moses would uh, talk to God and do that. And then God would stop the flag, but then they would not let the Israelites go, they would continue to keep them in Egypt, okay. So at that point, you can see the stubbornness of uh, unbelievers, uh, the wicked people. They think that, you know, oh, okay, I love I pray to the God of Moses and request him to stop this trial or problem that I'm going through. And then when it's gone, when the problem's gone, they would not acknowledge that it is an act of God, that God is the one who made it happen. They would think that, I oh, don't know, it's nothing. Everything's fine now. I don't need uh, your so-called God. You know, I don't need to praise him. I don't need to thank him or uh, do a thanksgiving. So 
something like that. And then, you know, uh, they went through nine flags before the death of the firstborn. And it is only at that point when they lose some, someone they love that they really, uh, you know, let the people go. Okay. But then, of course, in the coming chapters, we'll see that uh, the, the Egyptians actually run after the Israelites, you know, to kill them. And then that's when the parting of the Red Sea happened. Okay. And so, you know, sometimes, sometimes non-believers would have that moment of, oh, maybe I should believe in this God, you know, because he's doing all these things, giving me all these problems. But the moment I pray, uh, the problem gets solved. Okay, but then after the problem gets solved, you're back to, ah, there's no God, eh? something like that. And then it will happen again until a, mo a certain moment, depending on the person, okay, when you lose something very valuable to you. That you come to realize that uh, there, really, there really is a God, okay. But then sometimes it can go two ways. One is you now believe in God and then you acknowledge his presence and that you get to know him and make him your savior or the other way what happened to the egyptians is that they became resentful you know you know they lose they lost their children so they're instead of owning up their mistakes you know it, it's their what they call it technically it's their mistake because if they already let the israelites go during the first flag or even before the first flag, then it wouldn't have happened, right? If they only believe that there is indeed uh, a God that takes care of the Israelites, then it wouldn't have happened. But they did just have to wait until the 10th flag and then they lose their children. Okay, so that's another way uh, with, in which people, non-believers, uh, tend to go when they when something extreme happens to them okay and then in Matthew chapter 16 we see um you call this the pharisees and seducers uh, tempting jesus and then the disciples uh what do you call this uh, jesus reminded his disciples not to uh what do you call this? To beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they thought he's, so he's talking about bread. And then after Jesus explained, they realized that he's talking about the doctrines or the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, which are, in a way, uh, they're not the ones that are found in the Bible or the text, biblical text, but uh, traditions, okay? basically uh, pertaining to traditions. Okay? Um, there are a few that happened here, but the pinakang point dito, I think, would be, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow, follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. A lot of non-believers uh, do not like, I think, the doctrine that Jesus Christ uh, was teaching, of course. You know, what What did he say? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Basically, um, self-denial, okay? You can't do the things that you want, okay? Because the things that you want are evil, wicked. You know, earlier or in chapter 15, uh, uh, the things for out of the heart proceeded proceed evil thoughts and murders, adulteries, fornications, basically uh, we sin. Okay? If we're going to let ourselves uh, do the things that we want, most likely we're going to be led astray, we're going to sin against God. Okay? And that's why we have to you know, deny ourselves. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Okay? If it do what we want, then we're going to sin against God. And then if we're not going to accept God as our Lord and Savior, we're not going to repent then you know we're going to lose our lives we're going to hell but the other sentence and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it okay when you become a christian uh you're trying to be more like christ and so you're following his teachings his examples and what 
His teaching is for us, for Christians to go out, share the gospel, help those in need, okay? And so, uh, those are the things that we must do. But then, not everyone is up for that. Not everyone would like to do that. They don't like to be bothered with such uh, activities. And so, it's it will be hard for them for to do that. Okay. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Because these people who are striving to be Christ-like, who are serving God, will definitely have their reward in heaven. Okay. So, whosoever will lose his life here on earth, they're going to deny themselves and you know, their wants. Uh, basically, it's not really denying because when you accept God as your Savior uh, and you repent of your sins, you're going to have a new, uh, you know, what they say is you're going to be a new creation and your heart will be changed. You will no longer desire those uh, undesirable things, those uh, sins and mistakes. You're going to desire uh, things that you th- no would please God. Okay, your desire would be to serve God, to be able to do His will. You know, to preach the gospel, to share it with others, and uh, to help the other people, especially the lost ones. Okay, so I think that would be the main the main point. And then another thing I'd like to share is that I've heard some some people or i don't know some groups are claiming that god uh, sorry that jesus christ did not actually make a claim that he's the son of god but here in matthew chapter 16 you can definitely see that he did say that he is the son of uh son of god the son thou art christ the son of the living god okay basically some uh groups or some people Basically, Jesus Christ has been called the Son of Man and also the Son of God because technically he's the Son of God, but then he, what they call this, he took the form of a man so that he could redeem our sins, and so that's why he's called the Son of Man. Okay, okay. So some also uh, some Bible do not have certain verses on them. Certain verses have been removed, especially those verses that says jesus christ is the son of god okay so uh it would be best if you don't use those bible versions uh for us we use uh king james version uh there are no missing verses (laughs) okay and then also uh later Okay, so that's it, I guess, for today, and may you have a blessed day ahead. Thank you for joining Bible in One Year. Hopefully, you're also reading your own Bible. Thank you, and God bless.